Good morning to all you Miami Dolphin fans out there. I'm Rob Mosley, a.k.a. Dolphins Thirsty, and I'm joined by JPF Scout, and he's also known as Digging in the Trenches, and you are watching a Miami Dolphins draft and free agency vlog. Anything Dolphins related. doesn't even have to be related to free agency or the draft if you want to talk, bring up any topic on the Miami Dolphins, past, present, or future. Please bring the comments in. And there you are, Justin. Good morning. Hey, how's it going? Good morning. So, how's everything out in Colorado? Oh, not too bad. Uh, just getting started here. It's a little gloomy, but I think it'll burn off here by the time like about noon or you know eleven o'clock rolls around. Another beautiful day. It's a fantastic Friday. Um, yes, it is. A- Great day to be a Dolphins fan. Thank you guys for joining us here live this morning with me and Rob on Dolphins Daily. We love having you guys here. Um, we love, you know, having like a water cooler conversation with you guys, uh, you know, kicking it down, kicking the can around and us, uh, everybody sharing their opinions on the Dolphins current situation, future, maybe even talk about the past every now and then, you know, but uh, we just love talking with you guys, but um, I'm fired up. You know, I live, eat and drink football. Uh, it's crazy, you know. I'm I'm coaching now, so I got coach in the day. I wake up in the morning. I'm right back to the film. It's just nonstop going here, but I love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's always awesome. oh, your favorite Com- sport. Yep, combine and- time. Everything's kicking right now. It's 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 awesome, bro. I did notice if you did notice myself that they were running the um, the forty yard dashes and all that, and a uh, couple guys, man, I hit right on the nail right there. Um, on my notes, I was talking about Owen Papano gonna be like a Really fast player, four or five ish. He goes out there, runs off his first his first forty was a four or five flat. And I was like, damn, my eyes must be not so old after all. And then he goes yeah. and runs a four four six. I was like, damn, he can really fly, man. But then uh Trenton Simpson turned around and went and did even faster. And I was like, Oh my god, these two can just fly around. So the off ball linebackers are uh, I think a hot uh commodity right now. Uh, we've already talked to Simpson. Um to look at those speed and his change of direction numbers were unbelievable, man. And it shows, it showed at the combine. Um, I think they're trying to step, like not talk to Papano maybe because that might be their target. I don't know, but it's crazy to me how they haven't met with him yet. Yeah. Hey, you, Hey, you know, your stuff. I, I give you that. Like I say, now brother, your final grading ranking, you know, and all that good stuff. We will find out how you did a couple of years from now, but as far as yeah. your eyeballs for the speed that they're going to do and stuff like that, you've done well. So, yeah, thank um, you. thank you so much. I, I know Trenton Simpson is, you know, he's probably going to be gone anyway, but I he's think still he'll a good, be, yeah, I think yeah, he's going to be, be gone. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I just always have to say probably because you never know what happens on draft night, but most right. 99.9% he's way, way, way gone. Right. And, did you, you, know, did you but, happen to see that, uh, Kalaja Cansey, um, did you see his 40-yard dash? No, I, I he, didn't. He put up one of the fastest times since, like, 2004 or something like that. He, he's for a defensive lineman in a five-tech. My note, did you got the? Did you do the breakdown of the notes of my Kalaja Kansi write-up? Because I'm telling you now, I talked about Oh, uh, no, not yet. I have not. Yep, I talked about that as well on my notes um, during the, the process um, about how this guy is – going to be testing out really high he literally can fly um i knew that was going to happen man i knew once that dude got into the combine that he was going to put up um like you know warrior type numbers and people are going to start falling in love with his metrics um his game tape matches his metrics um the guy is literally an animal uh here it is right here i just found it just came across it he has a total score of a 98 feet or nine change of direction 10 contact balance nine speed nine uh arm length eight power nine pass rush polish eight his technique is beautiful man flawless 10 so he gets a good good technique grade that goes high with someone who coaches d-line plays d-line that that could be the matter of difference between you winning and losing making the play or not making play and it's technique um stack and shed nine tackling versus the run and tackling in general and eight his dog is a nine. Just the top of it right here, like what I said, is it's it's what happened. And like this was written way before the draft or the combine ever went took place. Speed is unreal for a man his size. Just outstanding. Can move naturally. Looks like a high four sevens. 
he ended up running, I think, in the four below that. So, wow. I, mean, I mean, I knew it was going to be something like that when I watched that tape. You can just see it, man. These guys will literally run flat out. Yeah. And it's well, heck, I know one uh, of your favorites boys, is seems to be moving up draft boards, and um, that's Jack oh. Campbell. I know normally we um, we sneak him into our later picks and stuff. And I don't, I don't know, if, much I don't know if those are going to be realistic come draft days. It's not going to happen too much longer, bro. His stock's going to rise so high, we're not going to end up with any anywhere near that for that pick yeah, rate. You, like, yeah, you may have to take him in the second round if you want him. So maybe he must fall. I don't know if you'll there. even be able to get him in the second round. You might have to trade up because we are pick fifty one. I know like, he's I really, but in, in the mocks <laughs> we've been taking him in. Like, we, yeah, good morning, Steve. Happy to have Steve. your coffee in hand as you join Dolphins daily with thirsty and digging we're going about to do a little mock draft but we are talking about other things too and um but anyway i know i didn't mean to cut you off you can go on justin i, I just oh, saw you're, steve. All, you're all good my man yeah i seen steve in there too <clears throat> good morning steve we love you uh um, yeah make sure oh yeah wait let me give him his plug make yes, sure sir. you join steve every tuesday night 7 30 p.m on the fins talk sports network right here on youtube and I, you know, I really love, he's great, but his co-host is awesome. Super awesome. <laughs> his his co-host rocks. And anyway, and yes, that's me. But anyway, it's all good. He's great. Steve always comes prepared for his show. Make sure you give him a watch. So, and while you're at it, make sure you know our like button here this that's morning. Right. Give us a like and subscribe. Tell a friend and tell another friend. You're watching Dolphins Daily Live, like Rob just said with, uh, Digging and dolphins thirsty, but yeah, so man. Just, his, his stock uh, yeah, Justin, rising. I will let you do a little free talk here while I'm getting a mock draft set up in the All background. Right, yeah, set up a board. Yeah, this guy's stock is going through the roof, you guys. Um, I, there might not be a chance for us to get him at pick fifty-one. Um, I'd love to see us. Like I said, you've heard me talk about. We need to acquire more assets. Obviously, <clears throat> anything above fifty-one, I'm really excited to get if we can get our hands on it. Um, and then anything after pick 84 through 178, uh, that's a gap right there that I really, really would like to close. Um, you have tradable assets on your team to where you can go pick up a fifth round pick, maybe even a couple of them. Um, I don't see why we don't make these moves happen sooner than later in this draft as well. I think you could use those assets to add depth to the back end of either the line of scrimmage or the defensive backfield, <clears throat> whatever. But um, a lot of people's stocks are going to – this is where their stock's either going to take a tank or this is where their stock's going to take a little bit of a rise. Anybody whose metrics taste, tested out really well at the combine, obviously their stock's rising. Anybody who ran a little slower, like I noticed Penny Sewell – or not Penny Sewell, excuse me, the Sewell kid, Noah, he ran a little slower like like was I was expecting. Um, so his stock might take a little dip. I did want to say I mentioned about the J.L. Skinner thing, me and um, – Anthony, we're talking about it yesterday. <clears throat> he suffered a, an injury training for the combine, but he's expected to be fully healthy and ready to go for the beginning of the season. So I do not expect there to be any any knock on his draft stock. So what, what I was saying yesterday, how I thought he was hurt, how he's going to you know, maybe be held out a season or half season, that's incorrect. He is going to be ready to go. His draft stock is still maintains where it is, and that's on J.L. Skinner, the safety out of uh, Boise State. Um, great looking safety, man. Steve, I think a lot of us feel that. I don't think you're probably going to go offensive line for one mini career. We're looking in the mirror and say, "Well, I'm not the best at drafting <laughs> linemen. Let me get somewhere else." But it, I really do feel <clears throat> that I don't know. Will be. I know. I. I know we never know. That's the thing with the yeah. Dolphins. You think no, and then they drop a receiver with the first pick or some yeah, crazy exactly. thing. That would be you know, they just they always throw <laughs> us a curveball. But they yeah, do. I would think I would be in line with Steve thinking that most likely um they will go defense. But well, again, think- anyway, I'm gonna start this real quick, Steve. And um, well, not Steve, well, Steve, I know he's not the biggest mock draft guy, but I was started, he's in here. And Justin, well, you can talk in the meantime. I, I honestly think that it depends on what we do in free agency. And I, I, I agree with Steve. We definitely will probably lean a lot defense in the draft. But at the same time, we need to really cover our bases in the free agency. We got some holes to fill. 
I would like to see these holes filled sooner than later so we can go into the draft um, with the ability to take best player available if that's our decision. Um, I obviously want to fill a lot of holes that we have before we get into the draft. Um, a lot of players could fall right to you and you never even, you know, we didn't even know it. You know, maybe Jack Campbell's rise would mean a Drew Sanders stock falling. I don't know, but uh, maybe somebody will fall into our laps that we didn't expect. Nope, I agree. So, you know, you never know. Anyway, I'm going to reject this trade. We'll do a no trade again. Maybe later if we do another one, we can actually sure. do a there trade. Are gonna, but there are, anyway, we, 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 I just now we're set up. We're on the clock. We got a couple minutes to, you know, get caught up on everything. So what do you think of all the noise around Lamar Jackson? Do you think it's just silly noise? I think it's just silly noise and not feasible. I think it's silly noise. Um, I agree with you. But at the same time, man, I'd never, never, never uh, take anything out of consideration for this team because I've seen them pull the rabbit out of the hat many a times. Um, is it something I would like to do? Like, no, but, that man, that offense probably really would be explosive. But from a passing aspect, I don't think it would be as explosive as it was last year. From a running aspect, yeah, they'd have the fastest team on earth. <laughs> uh, the, they'd have the really fast offense. It would be explosive. I'm not the biggest Lamar Jackson fan. Anybody who knows me knows that. But um, I would, I'm not going to say I'm against it. I'm for anything that wins us a Super Bowl, you guys. That means whoever. I don't really care who plays quarterback, just win. I want to win and I want to continue to win. And you got to do that via the draft. So is this the top of the board here? Gibbs, Washington, Dexter, Musgrave, Skinner, White, Mock? Yeah, that's the. See, this is the this is the thing, dude. Like all of us, like if we want to go defense, we want a running back, we need this, we need that. Remember the member, we've had this conversation before. There's very little in this draft of a couple of different positions, you know, nose tackles. Center. What's your thoughts? I know um Steve, he likes this is the one draft project he likes. He likes Darnell Washington. What was your I love thoughts Darnell on Darnell Washington? I love Darnell Washington. He's my you know what? Idol. Since Steve is loyal to our show, I'm gonna draft. Let's just do a little different. I'm gonna let Steve. Steve, I'm Dak and Darnell. Let's just do. So I'm gonna see how things fall. So I'm going off the board and I'm taking him. Sorry, Justin. You, I let you pick later. I'm always letting you have the candy. So today I'm giving Steve some candy. So yeah, I, I went Darnell. Don't worry. Washington, I know you would. You could tell me who you would have taken. That's fine. If they would. If they would. I, just, if they I, I wanted I, Washington right there, dude. I honestly would be kind of pissed off. Like, I'm not trying to have a, a rookie tight end come in there and slow cook him for three years until he learns how the system, like, that's a wasted pick. Um, we need a veteran tight end down there, someone who can come in right away. It's a seamless transition. I don't have a lot of coaching to do at the position. Yeah, I love oh, Meyer. Yeah, I love look at Watt that. Jack team. Campbell went right before our pick right there. Yep. Oh, and then look who got him, the Patriots. Perfect landing spot, for perfect players. See, that's – I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. Don't worry. I'm going to let you do your – I just did that no, because keep going. Steve, keep, keep going, Steve um, the other night good. mentioned Darnell Washington. So, you know, I, I just went Darnell Washington there. Love Even Washington. though Steve just said we're going to go defense. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've got but anyway, team. how about – oh, I know you like Owen. Is he okay or is that too high here for your taste? On Owen, no, that's a beautiful pick right there. That would be a great pick. What else is on the board? Let's see. Titman, Freeland, Bergeron, Abanacanda. Look at that. Look at a name you haven't seen in a minute, dude. We just hit up on the board. I haven't seen Land in a second. Isaiah Land. That's got to be from Combine Metrics testing. Oh, we're getting too far down, so I'm going to go back to the top of the list because we don't want to go Steve, too far. You're, Steve, you sound like me over here, dude. I'm like a broken record. I've been talking about we need a true nose tackle for five years now. It's I don't know, man. We'll see. Yeah, people... You missed it the other day, Steve, when you weren't here. Um, Justin drafted a nose tackle. We got some that's heat right. from people. We got some heat from people in the room saying that's an awful draft, but it's ju he was giddy. Justin was giddy. Man, I'll be honest with you. There's very little of nose tackles in this draft. There's literally like three of them that I like, two of them that I really, really like. And then there's centers, same thing. There's very little centers, very little guards, very little nose tackles in this draft. So when everybody's all caught up on these corners, these safeties, 
these running backs and these linebackers. The linebackers, not so much you can't get anywhere in the draft, but the other th- the the corners, the safeties, and the running backs, you can get them anywhere in this draft, even UDFA. All so, right, Justin, we're going to run a draft in a minute where I let you have all the fun again. Go ahead. I'm, pick, nice I'm picking picks. Owen here. I like that pick. All right, I'm picking Owen I don't like Owen your first here. pick, but I like that second pick. Ooh, this here. Let's see if – I'm going to see. We're going to have a little fun. I'm going to change. Let's see if I – I don't Would need a change? four from that. That gives that gives me no fun. That give them back their me. seventh round, bro, and take um one. See if they'll give you one sixty two. Try to get that gap filled in between. You know that eighty four. Uh, it was did yeah. not. Hey, they but we tried. To, so. They want you to go later. They want you to take in the two hundreds in order to get yeah. that one done. Yeah. Now, no, we're down. We're back on the clock. We we're gonna. We said no. I'm oh look. Say no. Um, What's the name is talking about getting a true nose tackle? There's one that I like that's in the draft, one of the very few. And Mozzie Smith right there on the top of the board. Oh, look at this, though. We only have to pull four spots and pick up a one. Oh, but give up pick 240. Take away the oh. 240 and see if they'll do it. That way you keep that pick and then gain one. That's the only way I even present a trade offer. Yeah. If I'm gaining assets for it, if not, then forget it. Yep, see, oh. they don't want them. Don't do it. <laughs> All right, there you go. So uh, let me get this off the. So, All yeah, right, you got, so, you got some names up there Joseph, Bigsby, Smith, Palmer, Titman, uh, Freeland, Kai Blue, Kelly, Bergeron again. That's my highest rated tackle on the board right there at pick 84. Oh, look, look, uh, my newest addition to my top 50 big board, the Atamawa uh, Atabori. This kid is amazing, man. That's one of my highest rated five techs. Scored 100 on my SRS scorecard yesterday. Squatty, explosive athlete, can play the run, can pass rush, has some pass rush polish. Excellent looking prospect. The Marvian Overshone. Oh, yeah, he's been, baby. He's been Overshone. interviewed by the Dolphins. He sure has. The Marvian Overshone. I wrote on DolphinThirsty.com. If you want to see some combine notes, I mentioned that the Marvian Overshone was one of the guys interviewed by the Dolphins this week. Yeah, so where, what are you leaning? I let He's Steve a- kind of pick. He didn't really pick, but I know he liked Darren Hall Washington, so I spoke for I mean, Darnell. And He's a former I, I, safety, too, that uh, DeMario Overshone, you guys. He's a former safety that's converted to linebacker. So that's why his coverage skills are so crisp. So he's done it before. Honestly, I would I'm leaning toward the one tech right here because there's not or the tackle on in between what's on the board. Bergeron and Mozzie Smith. What's below? What's keep going down? Because you'll find hidden gems down there that no one even talks about sometimes if you keep going. Well, at least based off my scorecard. Demario Overshone, Jimmy Ro- Jamie Robinson, his stock's falling a little bit. Um, McDonald, the pass rusher, Stromberg, Zach Harrison, Henley, Sammy Laporta. Yeah, man, it's between those two for me. You take Henley, Henley and Ricky Stromberg is FYI. If you want to yep. learn more about them, go to dolphinthirsty.com once again. So anyway, um, so where are you leaning, Josh? I'm going to let you do the pick here now that we're getting into the deeper numbers. I would actually take Mozzie Smith. Right here. Where was like he at? Very top. All the way up. Oh, okay. I see him. Yeah, so this would, well, you think he can play nose? Yeah, he can play nose. That's a nose tech. That's a one tech right okay. there. Okay. So okay, we're gonna pop them in there. And now we, we got a little we bit. We need one tech. Even if you drew to draft a, a one tech and then like sign a free agent one tech, then you're okay. Oh, Miles Brooks just went off the board right up there. Uh, I took him in one of my mocks draft, Miles yep. Brooks. Oh, damn. There went my my best player on the whole draft just went, Riley Moss. That's where we should have reached right there and went all the way down the board and just picked up Riley Moss right there. Uh, here we come. First pick of the sixth round. We are back on the clock, and we have some talent still. I know DeMarco Hallums, I'm probably pronounced screwing his name. I know you like it. I know yeah, you like him. There. Oh, hell yeah. Yep, that would be the guy that went to my eyes, went first to Helms. I was like, oh, wow, he's still there. Deuce Vaughn. 
And I know you like Deuce Vaughn. If you yep. do want to take a running back, this may be the prime area before we wait till the seventh round. Oh, yeah, you get him anywhere, though, from here on out, I still believe. Look, Mo Abraham, Demas Jr. down there. Nick Jones, Gavarius. Chris Rodriguez, Owens. you say, so Chris Rodriguez, you like, but you say he's going to have to overcome some fumbling issues. He's talented, very talented running back, man. Really good. I know you like this Max Dugan, not for a pick here, but you like his game. Yep, I like Max Duggan a lot. I think he'll be a good quarterback eventually. Anyway, now I'm getting way down that list. So let me go back up to the top so I don't confuse you. There we are. That's our top right there. Man, I don't I I would I'm in between right now, maybe like going with the Helms or Lupke. And the only reason why I want Lupke is to build a fullback slash like tight end H back role for when um Ingold is on the end of his career. Yeah. So when <laughs> and that's not now. I would take um go down. What was below there? Below Lukey again? Oh yeah. Take Helms, obviously. Yep. And that would now we're pick. coming to our final pick of the draft, which is a good time to remind you guys, hit the like and subscribe button while you're in here. We will greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I like Helms, man. If you want a, uh, a nice safety, you can come up and definitely, definitely tackle in the open field. Well, he hey, one of my favorite names in the whole draft, Bumper Pool, is on the board. <laughs> He's a good player, honestly. D uh, Daniel Mihan just left a, uh, a comment. Deion Henley killed it last night. I have no problem drafting this guy. Me neither. I love Henley. I'm a big fan. Scored high on my board. Um, I'm happy with like four or five different um, linebackers. Obviously, the first one will be Drew Sanders, Jack Campbell, Henley, DeMario Overshone. I like all of those guys right there. Corey Jordan's right under bumper pool. I know you were, you've liked him in the past. Love Corey Durden. There's another one tech, but we already got our one tech. I watched oh, TJ right? Bass. You like TJ Bass. Love TJ Bass's game. Jason Taylor. Love his game as well. There's a punter right there too. You could get, keep going down. Oh, sorry. There, I know oh, Michael God. Turk. I know you like Michael Turk. Yep. I do. I also like a kicker that's on, maybe he's on the board still, that Harrison Mevis. Uh, Moody. Yeah, there he's too. still there. Yeah, I like Mevis. I like Moody too. I like both those kickers because they're they're good. Like yeah. they're accurate. Um, Coburn, Allen, keep going. Bass. Oh, J Jartavius Martin's stock was rising. Oh, you like up. Evan Hall, too. Evan Hall. Yep, love Evan Hall. You know what? It's an interesting fact on this Evan Hall kid is he's getting so good at uh, catching out of the backfield. He's almost like another receiver out there. He's, he's looking real good. He, like I said, I was talking about oh, That sounds like a good football. fit for McDaniel offense. Yeah, then. it does. That's why I was bringing it up. I was like, damn, that, he would be a great fit. I oh, now we're really getting down here. So I'm going to go back up to the top again. So let's see. Take Evan Hall, dude. That's who you want? Yeah, take Evan Hall. His stock's going to rise still. That's not a bad pick. Yeah, I'd take Evan Hall. Take Just take Evan Hall right here. Screw it. Get a, get a back. Let's get it out yeah, of the just way. Just get one. You don't have to bid on an income. And there we go, guys. Darnell Washington. Owen and Mozzie. Oh. Yeah, thank you, Papano. <laughs> and and Mozzie Smith. Smith. See, Smith, I, that's a name I can even say. Right. Uh, and DeMarco <laughs> Helms, Helms, is it? Uh, Helms. Helms. Okay. Helms. And, and Evan Hall. Not bad, bro. I like it. I think that draft is not bad at all. The, the you know, like I said, I didn't like the very top, but, you know, who? what do I know, dude? Like, maybe Washington turns around and uh, turns the corner quicker than anybody else has. Hey, that was NFL a little – that was – that was a – yeah, that was a little pick for Steve. It, Sorry, it Steve, could. I'm throwing you there. That, but I just know he said the other night that he actually liked Darnell. So right. I was like, I hey, like for Darnell. Steve yep. for Steve to say Thank he likes a prospect, yep. I was Thank like, you, hey, Steve. that's pretty good. No, so, I'm honestly I I'm I'm in agreement with him. He's on he's rated in a three-way tie right now in my tight end big board for the top spot would be Michael Mayer, Darnell Washington, and Dalton Kincaid. Those are my top three tight ends, all scored a 90. No one scored 
so far. I mean, I got a couple left to do, but no one scored over a 90 in, in tight ends, which, I mean, it, it looks good. It looks solid. It's a solid class, but it's not like like mind boggling or like like the corners or the safeties or the running backs. It's not like that. Or even the tight ends for that matter, or the uh, linebackers. They might be about even. It's the, you know, the talent pool is not very heavy on, like I said, nose tackle and interior offensive linemen. There's just not a lot of them. There's some, but there's not a lot. Yeah. So, hey, you got to, sometimes you got to, you know, get what you can get. Like you said, maybe stray a little off your BPA just because you really need that. And there's not many others. That's the only time you ever stray is if it's a position that there's very few. I mean, though, someone may you because you you gamble and say, well, someone at another position that I have rated almost as high might fall to me. Yeah. But at that position, no one that if I don't take him here, then that no one at that position is even going to be in his realm the next nope. time I'm on the clock. It's crazy too because me and you have done a lot of these, and I've done hundreds of these already by myself. And I'll be honest with you, the thing I notice is when I go, I'm taking my best player available according to my scorecard. I end up with like four four safeties in like three corners and that's like it's just not realistic and that's why i said that like if we were to take best player available i'm okay with it but that's why i'm looking nose tackle that's why i'm looking uh guard center things that there's not a lot of and get the best out of all three of those position spots then i feel that you're really doing something and like i said we know this a lot of these mock drafts are Premature is the word I would use because until free agency, don't we know what our roster is going to look exactly. like, who we who we lose, who yep. we gain. So really, drafts are going to start coming into a lot more focus after March fifteenth, after the initial wave of the big signings. So then you know what you're you're looking at as far as your top needs because our top needs right now maybe the offensive could prize us and grab a couple guys out of position we think is our top need right now. And then you're like, well, that's no longer a top need, so we're going to have to – You're right. You know, it, it's funny you say that because think about it. Dolphins could turn around and free agency starts and they could pull a trigger and be like, okay, cool. They went out and signed uh, Bobby Wagner and got um, another line like a, a TJ Edwards or Kaiser White to put with him. Like, and right, then so then all of a sudden and, linebacker's not your top need. Yeah, going into- exactly. At that point, linebacker's no longer your top need going into the draft, which is, which is exactly kind of what I want to do. If you could do that and we could eliminate that need going into the draft, yeah. oh, wow. If they yeah, I, I would hope that – but that's what we want every year and it never happens. But every yeah. year you hope that you go into the draft without any glaring. Every team has needs but no glaring need like, oh, my God, if we don't have this precision, we can't even play a football game. Because right now the running back – the <laughs> Dolphins can't even play football too. right now. We don't even have running backs, so or you know. Linebackers. You have no linebackers. To yeah, no linebackers are in have two, so. <laughs> No running backs, and you have no linebackers. In fact, yeah, so I've said this for years now. Besides the safety position, the deep safety position, and now that we're playing two uh, two safety looks, that's fine. But you're weak up the middle. You have no middle linebacker, no true middle linebacker, no true nose tackle. And we have a center who really is a guard who played great down there. It was, yeah, top five. But don't tell me if you could get better and be the best offensive line down there that you wouldn't take that. If yeah. there, if someone presented the fact to you, like, here, take this center, kick this dude out to left guard. Now you, instead of having the number five offensive center, you have the number one. Oh, and now you got the best offensive line in football. And that, that's it's a scenario. And also, Daniel, thank you. You snuck in here when I was in the draft on the draft site. So I didn't even see you sneak in here. So thank you. Good morning to you, Daniel. And, um, oh, I was thinking of you this morning, um, Justin, because when I was um, taking my son to school this morning, I was listening to the Joe Rose show. Joe Rose? They, had, um, they had Mike White on the show. And I've he, seen that. You've seen that on your Twitter comments. I'll yeah. So, and he said he would love to play for the Dolphins, but he also said that he likes playing for the Jets. That is a really good locker room and he likes to lay – and all that, but he goes, oh, of course, who wouldn't want to play for the Dolphins with what they have here? And just uh, I grew up miles from the stadium, so he, you know he was like, so he, you know, so he, of course, he sounded like that. But you know, he realizes most likely he's going to be signing as a backup role in either place because he hears rumors that we all hear that the Jets are hot and heavy to either get Carr or try to get Rogers. But you know, there's a good chance that if that doesn't happen, he could be back there with a chance to compete for the number one job. So. Ultimately, he's going to, I think from how he was saying, he didn't say it, but from the sounds of it, he, he's going to like wait and see how all the quarterback situation rooms play out with the big so. names. 
and then he might be able to pick and t- choose a team that, oh, I might be a backup, but I have a good chance to become a starter. And obviously looking at Miami, it's a good chance because Tua, unfortunately, as we always say, his availability is not his, his best, best ability. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, but he seemed like a good kid, you know, and like I said, his mom, mom taught one of my sons in elementary school back in the that's day. Cool. So that's cool. Yeah. I, I mean, that's how Mike. local he is. I mean, so that's yep. really I'm cool. a Mike White fan, you guys. I like the kid. I, I actually thought he was good coming out of the draft. I thought he would be a little bit better than at this point in his career. I thought he'd be even a little bit better, maybe progressing, but he hasn't really got that. Well, he got the opportunity last year, but then got hit by Matt. He Milano says 100% percent recover from the Brabs. He said he was <laughs> feeling awful. But you know I'm that sure. now he's he said he couldn't even laugh, but now he's back to being okay and he's ready to go and looking forward to being a free agent and see what happens. I would love that. So, would but love he definitely that. didn't rule out Miami, definitely thought it was good. And if it would work out, it'd be super. But you yep, know, he the didn't. answer he gave sounded to me like it was a politically correct one. Like he's like, Yeah, I love my team. We have a great locker room, but damn, I'm a doll, a diehard Dolphins fan. I'm from yep. here. I would like go, oh, hell yeah, dog. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, I know. And honestly, like I say, we'll see. We're, we're, the Jets owner is more or less on record saying he wants a big name quarterback, bring in a veteran quarterback. So but if they lose out on the car sweepstakes and I don't end up thinking Aaron Rodgers ultimately goes there. So I don't know who they will really about a Jimmy G or so I don't know. It's funny. You said that as soon as you started talking, you brought the both of them in there. And I was in my mind, I thought about it. I'm like car, nah, Rodgers, nah. Then I'm like, who are they going to sign? I was like, watch. I bet you they throw the bag at Geno Smith and go backwards from where they were. And go back to who they drafted, and or maybe they'd be a surprise player in the Lamar Jackson if it doesn't work out with it, you know. You, I, maybe it could be a definitely. And I haven't even heard that rumor, so I'm not making it up. I'm just saying, you know, they could be a some, you know, if their owners really got his heart set on getting the big quarterback to come in there, you know. Yeah, sometimes but, those owners, you know, they want to be the big boys club, show off their teams to their fellow billionaires watching the game in the suite with them, and say, "Look at who I have on my team." You I'll know, be honest, so some... um, I'm scared, man. And the reason why is because I think the Dolphins are really serious about this Lamar thing. I know it's not like a, a realm of possibility because of where we sit with financial cap space and no assets. But where there's a will, there's a way. Sometimes the teams will make these things happen. And the owner, I guarantee you, would love to have him some Lamar Jackson. That's going to put – that's going to do two things. Oh, don't sway, though. Gonna... No. You were saying no, no, no. Just to top the top. top the... I, I know. I... But I know, I know. There's you I never know. know. That's why I said you never know in the NFL. Things puts, can happen. They can make things. In, it puts butts in the seats, and it gets everything exciting. And you're gonna score points. Let's yeah. see. That's like maybe what the owners think. And I don't know. I don't own the team, but I know that he wants excitement and he wants to win. Does that mean you're gonna win by putting butts in the seat and having this no. exciting offense? Oh no! Believe me, we put butt. The last year was the first time the Miami Dolphins ever had season tickets sold out you know like yeah. every season ticket was sold out and it's like because you know we, we, went the and got, we got we got <laughs> i know yeah we went and got hill we went and got all that and got a lot of fans but ultimately did it help us win some games yes but did it get us that elusive playoff victory no so at the end of the day we're really no closer to what we want than you know saying oh we made the playoffs well hell we made the playoffs in 2016 with adam gates right. what did that get us other than oh yeah they made the playoffs but they Got their butt kicked. This year we got closer. We're getting closer. We had a tough playoff game this year. We didn't you know fold what? him in with our third I, stream. I honestly truly believe it's a matter of, oh, man, I, I hate to beat a dead horse here and keep talking about this, but it's a matter of consistency. It's a matter of coaching. It's a matter of having these guys ready to go on a weekend and week out basis. It's a matter of going on a three game West coast trip and coming out of there with at least two of them. Yeah. It's a matter I mean, at of at least having, one of them would have been a big difference. It's a matter we of even one of those play. on that West it's coast. It's a matter of everybody lining up in the right position. It's a matter of getting the play call in on time. All these things are a matter and it comes down to one thing and one thing only coaching. Uh, the difference between your winning and losing is inches. Like I say, it's a game of inches and it truly is. The difference between winning and losing the Super Bowl, you guys, might start in OTAs. It might start in training camp. That's why I'm so hard. I even the coach the kids I'm working with now. I'm like, you well, guys. Speaking of coaching, did you see Mike McDaniel? He, I'm sorry to cut you off. I want to forget. No, he did fine. mention one of his biggest flaws was getting the play in on time. And they asked, yeah. "What are you going to do to correct this?" He put it simply: get the play in faster. 
So hopefully he lives through those words and he's learned that because we all knew we were going to have growing pains with a rookie head coach because one thing Miami Dolphin fans know are rookie head coaches where we got our specialty. We bring in rookie NFL head coaches all the time, every three years or so. So we know, you know, there's going to be some growing pains in that first year. So, you know, we had some growing pains, but he said he realizes some of his flaws. And, oh, and another thing he touched on was why he didn't um, – ever consider firing the special teams coordinator, Danny Crossman, because he said if he was the sole problem, yes, but there was many other issues that went into it. And the, the thought never crossed his mind. I know a lot of fans, as almost as many fans were calling for his job as they were for Josh Boyler's Josh job. Boyle's. So, you know, and, but he said that thought never crossed his mind. So, you know, we're going to have Danny Crossman another year, whether you like it or not, he's our special teams coordinator for another year. And, you know, that's fine, though, because, you know, he has a year to, you know, you got to have some time. So let's see how well, we do. If there's no improvement this year, then, yeah, he's going to be he'll be gone. I think a lot of the problem was due to a lot of people probably don't want to hear it. It's an excuse, but I'm not using it as one because it's reality. Injuries, Trill Williams, Nick Needham. We lost people that could play. Right, and guys that would have been or end up being starters, like Kudo would have been a contributor, but he had a, he would have been he a ended up having a critical role. He had a critical role on the defense. Bethel there for a while had a critical, you know, we had guys that had critical roles on the defense that were supposed to be our special team studs. So, yeah, you know. I agree. It's just like I tell the kids I'm working with now that I'm coaching for the Colorado Longhorns. I'm like, you guys, technique is the difference between us winning and losing a rep. It could be the difference between you winning and losing a game because it could be that one play that I needed you to squeeze it down low and stay home. And you were running around all wild instead of just being where you needed to be. If you're where you needed to be on every single play, Nothing can beat you, bro. I know. We, we've really had you, bad. It's Our return just, game, okay, whatever. Because the return game is like almost minimum in the NFL now, but other than a few here and there. But the coverage is what killed us. I was like, they weren't staying in their lanes. They weren't, you it, know, they were just Yeah, like, they weren't. But it's a matter of experience in the in the schemes that they're running. And what I'm trying to tell you is like, can't wait to see this, this, this Miami Dolphins football team in like year three and a four of like a Fangio defense and a Mike McDaniel's offense. And they all have been together and they all know the system. They all know where they're supposed to be. They all know where they need to line up and when they need to be there and where they need to go. It's a matter of playing really, really fast, like lightning quick and being like, Oh, I need to be over there. You don't need to think about it. You just need naturally go where you need to be. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, it's no, I, I'm, you know, me, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Playbook, but yeah, so coaching, you know, fundamentals, all of this stuff comes into hand because it all goes into one thing and that's, you know, in the playbook in and out, like in order for me to get on the off my offense or my defense, you need to quiz out, test out when I'm like, listen, I'll call out a play. This is what's happening. And they show you this and dump this down low to replace the guy on a switch release. If you don't have the play right where it needs to be diagnosed, you just fail the test. I need you yeah. to test out right so you can go over there immediately. I don't need right. No so thinking. because you're in a game, then it's boom. You just boom. react I and it's react. I just, just need you to quickly react and be like, "That's my key." Boom and hit it. That's all I need you to do. You do that. And then another an, another note from the combine, which Chris Greer also made a media appearance, I see and that. he. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, but I know you. You can talk about his hoodie that you loved in a minute, but <laughs> but he um he mentioned about running backs a lot of what he echoed the thoughts of what a lot of the Dolphin fans have been saying. They wouldn't mind running back, running back with, I no pun intended, but it came out, you know, bringing back, I would use that word, bringing back Moser and Wilson. That's not out of the realm. And they would love to have both of those guys back and then maybe add to the room and Ahmed and we got mentioned. So the three that gets four Gaskins never. So Gaskins is basically gone, I guess, but they didn't ask him about Gaskins. They, so right. in all fairness, they asked him specifically about Wilson and Moser. But then I heard in another conversation somewhere that they like Ahmed. So love and, Ahmed, dude. Like, and he's a restricted all... free agent, Ahmed. So, you know, yeah. he had he had most likely will be back. The other ones on, you know, he, you know, they acknowledge they're unrestricted free agents. Some team can end up giving them an offer they can't refuse as the whole exactly. thing goes. Someone could come in there and take Wilson or Mostert and be like, yes, and I'll give you five million, and they'll take it. Um, who knows? And the Dolphins gonna are gonna say, Thank you for your service, but That's no, we gotta go yeah, cheaper, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I think Ahmed's it's he's coming back. 
Like I can already smell that one coming from a mile away. We've been talking about it for weeks now, me and you. Um, I think he'll be back in the fold for sure. Like you said, he's a restricted free agent. So if someone goes out there and signs him to an offer sheet, now you've got to give us back compensation, you know, as far as that draft status goes. Um, I don't know what that would be either. So don't ask me because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know, but I know you're, but you're right. So, so there are possibilities that some of the, we are come back with those. I mean, I would like to have those three guys back and then add a new guy in place of Gaskins, but thank you, Gaskins. You've been great. Uh, you way overcame the odds as a seventh round pick and played for Miami, gave us some good football over the years, but it's time to get a little faster at that slot. And you know, find it's, someone else. It's move. nuts, bro. But like the like Steve was talking about it earlier in the show, how he thinks we're gonna go defensive heavy in the draft. Yeah, I honestly truly believe that in my heart. And the reason why is because I want to go heavy offense in, in in the free agency. I need I need veteran offensive linemen, you guys. I need guys who actually fit this scheme and can run an outside zone scheme. I need you to be able to have movement. I need you to be able to scrape and phase on contact. And your your eyes, your hands, and your feet all need to work together. I don't need you to be Liam Eikenberg and your eyes see it where it needs to go, but your feet are over here behind you and not going right. where your eyes go. Your eyes need to follow your feet. Just like a pass rusher, dude, your your eyes follow your your feet. Your, they teach you, you know, run, 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 reach, run, 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 reach. And that's why is because they're trying to get you to the damn quarterback. Right. It's, it's, it's something that I'm telling you, some of these guys have to be more coachable as well. Like you have to be getting up there and learn these techniques they're trying to teach you. And the offensive line is all technique. You need yeah. to be locked in. And so anyway, guys, if you're just joining us, thank you. We ran a mock draft earlier. I don't think it was clickbait in my title. We ran a mock draft and we're going to about <laughs> to run one more mock draft before we close yeah, out the show here. Yeah, let's bump one out. Let's bump one yeah. out. Yeah, I have it almost all ready to go. All I have to do is share the screen. I'll be honest and... with you guys, man. I really would like to fix this offensive line. And I think it, it could be done by getting – it, it, with a combination of things, either two veterans or a really, really good veteran to go with the turn Armstead and Hunt and Williams you already got, and then a really good, like, young stud offensive lineman out of this draft. That's a good possibility. I take either or, but you need to fix it. You need to shore it up. You need to get someone in there that'll that'll make sure that everything is going to run smoothly. You need, also need to get a little bit of luck the way we got lucky last year with Connor Williams. Um, what a damn pickup that was for us. Came in and we're like, listen, we think you can play center. Go over there, play center. You play every game for us and you're the you're number five rated center overall. That's great, man. Like that's, that's a leg up. That's moving forward in the right direction. You know, it's no, it is. season, but it's moving forward. I like that. We need more. Of anyway. That. Yep. As you can see, we got the Miami Dolphins pick selected. We're going to do seven rounds. We're going to do it fast. <clears throat> we're going to give um, Justin more candy this time to pick. But if one of you guys, because we're at the end of the show here, if one of you want to chime in, we'll give you the lead way and we'll let Justin take a back seat because we're team players here. But if not, <laughs> Justin's going to jump on this whole seventh round mock draft. And we're going to take we go. best player available. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if so, we'll do that. We'll see. This is under the, the 2023 you know, NFL draft is underway here yep. in the speediest picks in and, the history of the NFL draft. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the Miami Dolphins are on the clock. Um, yeah. So yeah, here we are. Just, We're coming up. Hopefully this is like we snatched up something we wanted in free agents. Drew Sanders gone. <laughs> and, we wanted something and, in free agency. Hopefully we ended up with something we really wanted. Please I, like yeah, and subscribe. Not, like, like Steve's is Steve. Thank you. Please like and subscribe. You're watching Dolphins Daily Live with Dolphins Thirsty, my buddy Rob and JPF Scout digging in the trenches. And we are on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm going to reject since one. we're – like I said, one day we're going to do a one with trade. Today we're going to just skip. We are on Brian Cox pick, number 51. Oh, my God. This is going to be rough. Ugh, why is this doing this to me? What's below? Oh, your you? your your Ika. However, I'm probably screwing his name. That's the first thing I seen up there. I'm like, no. That's your what's, nose tackle that he thinks a good nose tackle. What's below? What's below Kincaid? See now, if I was gonna do something like that, I'm like, yeah, Ika's my target. I might trade back here a couple picks because he'll fall probably at least four or five more. Charbonnet, Achain, Papano. Tyree? Oh, look, Tyreek Stevenson. I don't think that's really – I think he's moving up draft boards too fast, but 
damn, I would take Tyreek right there. <laughs> I know you would, but I, 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 like I said, I don't see him in real life being falling to us. But because I'm reading a lot of people are saying he's a first round pick probably now. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Or top of second round. Right. I can see it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, are we taking uh, Jordan Battles on there? There's other names that I've Ivan Pace. I know you like a little bridge for you there, but he's there. And then mm, no, nope, I'm taking Ica. You're taking him? Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. You're absolutely. gonna make people mad at you again, but hey, he's a he's you say he's a true nose tackle and just drop in the very few of them. You'd be mad until you see it start working on our defense the way it's supposed to. Yeah. And Miami's back on the clock. We're going to reject this one right never, away. Remember what I've said about these two. These these are my – this is my, like, my my uh, my uh wheelhouse. These next two picks, I won't trade them unless it's for, like, something you'd have to knock my socks off because these two picks, 77 and 84, these are what I call my target area picks. If I got a guy, I'm like, oh, that's my guy. This is where I'm taking them, both of them. So at the top, what do we got? Uh, Papano and Conci. Oh, my Lord. What do I got on linebackers? Go strictly linebackers. Let's see what we got. Papano. Pace, oh, Jack Tampa. Campbell wow. fell on this one. Dayland. Oh, man, there's a lot of good linebackers. Yeah, there's there. a good linebacker still there. Go all the way back to all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something a little unconventional here. Um, go to guards what do i got in guards is that the top that's that's Ooh, the top shit dude ovelia even though he's that power gap oh wow see this is hard because you're in between remember i just said i want to get guys that fit the scheme that can that fit the scheme better you know that can help run it and steve avilia is really not a a big scheme fit but it's something you could make work you see what i'm saying like hey can right. you play left he could because he can play left guard he can play center oh man i'm really torn between right there tack what's a tackle damn another good is that the top yep that's the top I want – give me Warren McClendon. Wow, you're taking him? Yeah. All right. And the reason why – I'm going to tell you right now why. Okay, now I just ended up doing a little bit of unconventional stuff right there. I'm to conventional drafting. I took um, Ica, the nose tackle, top-rated nose tackle, with the first pick. And then at 77, I took a great, great-looking prospect that can play left tackle or he can play right tackle. So that might have solved a problem that we needed that we had last year. We had some swing tackle issues. Maybe he's a good prospect for swing tackle. Now, for oh, right Campbell here, went off the board, but Owen's yeah. still there at linebacker. And Pace Jr. still there, too. Concy, damn, dude. Concy's still there. Papano still there. You know what? Oh, Go no. Down. Jack Campbell is there. He's lower than I is thought. He the there he is. Still? Yeah. Oh my God! If we're gonna get him, we gotta get him now. Campbell, right now. That's my guy. Remember, I said like you have your targets. That's my target. Jack Campbell yeah. is my target. If you haven't noticed that by now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's my target, bro. Jack Campbell's my target right there, and then maybe with the other one, I'm like I can probably play with it a little bit more. But it has to be. I would want it to be line of scrimmage. I think that's why I took. McClendon, the Georgia offensive lineman, a tackle. Come on, we can't go wrong with that pick. Do you think? You see no, all those. I agree. Backs We're just waiting those, for the first pick of the sixth round. Pick one all those running backs just came off the board. I noticed right there, like McIntosh. See, it, it's those picks right there of you guys. The eighty-four in between that one seventy-eight. If you don't feel that you ain't getting one of those good running yeah, backs. Yeah, no, you probably. don't have any value picks here at the running back overall mm -hmm. position. Probably let's see. Well, we um, got peep, Peoples, and then yeah, he's one seventy eight, and that's pick one seventy eight. But Deuce Vaughn, you like? Watch, go all the way down on the running back board. I want to show you guys something, which I showed you this yesterday. I know you like Evan Hall. Keep going. I'm going to show you something. You like I showed you already. Go down to like there it is, right there. 
382. That's my undrafted free agent target. Number one uh, choice right there, Xavier Valade. That's my number one. First call I make for my undrafted free agents is that kid. Go to the top of the board for this, though. All players. That's Mingo. Holy cow. He fell. Koontz. I love Koontz's game, man. That's a good blocking tight end, too. I like Clayton Toon, the quarterback from Houston. I like his game. What's below him, though? Ronnie Bell, Broerker, Peoples. Oh, my God. There it is again. Helms. Deuce Vaughn, baby. Oh, give me Deuce Vaughn. We're going to take a guy who will give us some lights out, explosive ability, catch the ball out of the backfield, a mismatch weapon. Yeah, he's a smurf, but he can help on special teams as well. And then the last pick will try to find us um, like a safety or a corner. Vito, morning, bro. What's up? It's okay. Better late than never. Thanks for coming in. Um, we're doing a, one more draft. You did one earlier, a mock, and now we're doing this last one. And good morning, Vito. I'm, I can't see your name in there, yeah, but I heard I, I know said. who you are. I'm on that's the draft I'm board, doing. operating the draft board. I can't see the comment section. But anyway, that's your that's your safeties that are remaining. What's all? What's my all? Everything. Very top. That, that's that's the very top. Okay. Uh, badge and oh, bumper pool. Corey Durden. Go below those guys. Let's see if we have anybody that fell. That's a steal. Connor Gallagher. Well, your Jar I know you like your Jartavius Martin. Yep. Is he there? Uh-oh. Uh, 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 no, no. That's the pick, bro. Bam. Martin? Yeah. Absolutely. If he falls right there to you, you take that every damn time. Trust me, dude. That kid's going to be really good, and that is super good value on him. Now, this might not be everybody's, like, favorite pick, especially or favorite draft, especially to the top. But I think it would pay dividend, dividends for you in the long run. Uh, Ika, the nose tackle out of Baylor with the first pick. Warren McClendon, the swing uh, tackle out of Georgia with the 77. My target, that seems to be the unanimous favorite amongst Dolphins fans, Jack Campbell from Iowa at 84. And then um, the little guy, the little speed bug out of Kansas State, Deuce Vaughn out of Kansas State there, the running back uh, with the 178 and my my go to at the last pick I usually like to make, which is Jartavius Martin out of Illinois, who can play cornerback. He can play all the cornerback positions, and he can play safety, probably both safety spots. He would make a great like extra like nickel back, dime back, uh, Jack Robber Rover role. Um, that dude would he play it really well. So I like that draft. I even like the last one we did. Both mock drafts were good today, so no complaints here. <laughs> and no complaints here, and we're almost at the end. Yes, yeah, Steve, like you said, I mean, Vito, like you, he's, um, Justin said, oh, can't get the words out. It's better late than never. Happy to have you in here. Absolutely. Always a great follow on Twitter, Vito. Oh, Vito, As awesome. is Steve and Daniel All you is guys, in here. Man. We got a whole, I know, there we got a good crew in here today. It's almost time to say bye, though. So, just any final thoughts going in? Are you going to have a show tomorrow with um yes. yeah. Reggie we'll Brown, former yep, we'll Houston be. Oilers receiver? So, 12 p.m. Yep. on this channel? Yep, 12 p.m. on this channel. Don't forget to catch the East. pro show. We will go over over everything, uh, aqua and orange. Maybe we'll be lucky enough to get uh, the great uh, JP on sports, wonderful Gino to come in, and we'll talk some different sports. Uh, a lot of things are heating up on the basketball scene and – Hockey's hot and heavy. Baseball just coming around. Sports is great. Great time to be a sports fan. When you get Obviously, Reggie Brown, a lot of football talk gets talked. Talk he's a, lot a former of Oilers receiver, really good guy. Gives awesome. us his time every Saturday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Yep. So he knows his stuff. Yes, he played for the Orioles, but yes, he's a, he's from Miami and is a Miami Dolphins fan. He will Die occasionally hard. wear the Miami Dolphins clothes, just like Justin. If he's not at the principal's office, but even then, sometimes he still has the Miami Dolphins gear on. So it's, yep. it's all I go to great. I go to practice in Dolphins gear, and all the players are like, Dol I got Dolphin. <laughs> so yeah. <trust> me. <laughs> yeah. I'm representing yeah. everywhere out here. <laughs> so all you guys, we're hoping you have a great weekend. Have a good weekend. Ends up 
And Justin, if they want to get that awesome hoodie you have, what's the best way for them to get that awesome? You just hit, hoodie? hit me up on my uh, uh, JPF Scout on my on my Twitter right there. Uh, contact me, DM me, we'll work it out. Stay patient. These things take forever sometimes, <laughs> but it's a uh, it's worth the wait. And uh, I'll go over all the information with you there. Get your payment info. Um, you really don't even have to pay till it comes in, and then I'll get your shipping info. Then after it's out of production, then we'll ship it to you. Boom, bada bing, bada boom. Yep, it's all good. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, no problem. And as I, we always say, make sure you. Tackle that subscribe button and hit that like button. Hit we love all you guys. It's another great, fantastic, fantastic Friday. And I hope all you guys have a great weekend. And we're with that, we're going to sign out. Fins up and um, go Dolphins. And this is hope, <laughs> you know, by next in a couple weeks here, we're going to be, you know, knowing who the Dolphins have freed up spec space on and knowing who they have targeted in free agency so we would have a lot more knowledge on what the draft board is probably going to look like so with no further ado bye justin goodbye everyone thank we'll you, see you again. later yep fins up top right to us.